Hi guys, Victor from Tech Heads here. Before we get started today, I would like to announce once again that our Patreon is officially live, but this time with some extra features. When you sign up, you officially become a producer of the show. This means that you will get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, such as our extensive show notes. On top of this, you will also have access to the episodes four days earlier than everybody else. If this sounds good to you, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash techheads. Now on with the show. Four, three, two, one, 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 one. So, here we go. How are you, you all feel tonight? Techheads back once again. What's up, my crypto heads? Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode, which is episode 36. And we are talking about more crypto stuff this week because, you know, tech heads is a very broad sort of name. We don't always just talk about the web. We also like to talk about investments in crypto and uh, calculators and electricity. It's all <laughs> technology. So, yeah, we're here. We're talking about crypto this week, and uh, we're going to be zoning in on a particular topic within crypto. Um, hopefully, you find it helpful and useful and enjoy it. I think you will. It is kind of a heavy topic, in my opinion, but um, I have done my research and done my best to dumb it down as dumb as possible, because i that's what I needed when I was learning it initially as well. So... Um, yeah, maybe we shouldn't jump into it immediately. Let's, you know, let's let's do a little chit chat, see what's going on with Anna. So, Anna, how are you? <laughs> All good. Yeah, I uh, had a busy week. You know, work has definitely picked up. I feel like we're well into the year now. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, already in February. So um, the the pace is like pretty high, but I guess that's really good. You know, I feel like I'm settling in pretty well with the new team, uh, learning as much as I can. So it's been it's been really good and uh yeah i i expected you know like my evenings to be m- more like free time but i've been usually working until like 5 30 uh or 5 5 30 and by that time i'm pretty beat so like at most i've been just making dinner and like lounging around um you know i my like i i think i built like two lego sets this week like smaller ones but yeah, that's about it. Like I've been, I've been a little tired, and uh, but I miss, you know, like coding stuff for fun. Uh, and I need to, I need to do something when the energy is back. I also need to just like start working out and see if I can, you know, <laughs> if that helps a bit. But um, yeah. but yeah, I think it's it's all part of you know like the the start of a new job. Like you know, it's a lot of a lot to take in, and you do have to put in um, a bit more time. I think than uh, once you're a bit more comfortable with the position. So yeah, no complaints for me really, you know, I've been pretty happy. So yeah, I mean, this goes for anybody listening. Like if you're starting a new job and you're trying to like keep up with like all the other things you may have been doing before, like such as working out, coding for fun, like that stuff is hard to do when you're starting a new job, like learning so much and it like just mentally drained you for eight hours Mm -hmm. of your day already. Like, you know, don't, don't stress yourself out. Just like prioritize, you know, getting comfortable. And then once you're a little more at ease with what you're learning, you know, get back to the stuff that you like to do, like working out and coding for fun. Um, but Legos, obviously that sounds like something that's like nice and chill and something that you can actually unwind and do versus, you know, if you're going to code something for fun, it's like, that's like, that's a job in itself, you know? So you know, yeah. obviously don't feel bad about that at all. I hope you don't. So, yeah, no, no, definitely. I think that once I, you know, once I, cause I feel like, you know, the, the end of the year was pretty hectic, uh, and now trying to get acquainted, you know, get settled into this new team and learn, you know, all about like learn as much as I can about the actual work and the company. Uh, it's a process, you know, and it's, it's hard to, just restrain that to nine to five. So I think when, you know, when the time is right and I feel like I'm more like well rested uh, and I, you know, can implement that into like my routine, then I, I I'll definitely do some more, you know, um, side projects and like things for fun on my own time. Mm -hmm. But 
for now. Uh, Lego is probably going to be it because it's very therapeutic, I find, you know, because I feel like everything just escapes from my mind. And I'm really I like I focus, but it's like a light kind of focus because yeah. you're just putting, you know, blocks together. But it's very relaxing. And um, and then, you know, I, I feel like it's a good way to unwind before going to bed instead of. I don't know, trying to grind out like another project where, you know, you're using a lot of brain power after working a full day, like uh, I'd be pretty exhausted, you know, like within a week. So uh, and if it's exhausting, it's not fun. So I, you know, if I do code on my own time, I want it to be fun. Uh, and it can take however long it takes. Like I am not gonna, you know, really be too, uh, be too structured about it. I would just be like, you know, a casual thing. I mean, you also only only have to be like four years old to put Legos together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but right, like the, exactly. But the you know the the ability to see what you're building in real time is really nice. Versus like if you're mm-hmm. coding something, yeah, you don't really have that. Like you you might at some le- level, but it's very like non tangible for the most part. If like let's say you start with the mm-hmm. back end before you do any front end, like. You're not going to see anything that you're doing like you, you, right. you get a feel for like how much work you put in. But as far as like tackling the list of items that you need to tackle, like that's all you have to really go off of as far as progress. Right. So at least with Legos, mm-hmm. it's like in front of you, you're like, oh, well, like I have three quarters of my pieces already done. Like I just need to put the rest together. Like, I don't yeah. know. It's a great it's a great way to unwind. I actually just got a tiny Lego set for christmas and uh i still haven't opened it i think it's vintage though so i'm a little scared to open it here let let me show you actually um yeah let's see it was kind of a joke because when i was really young um okay let me even backtrack a little more so uh yeah some um basically like my parents they sent me uh my christmas list from when Mm -hmm. i was like four or five like super young and they kept it. So um, they sent it to me and one of the items was like Spider-Man and Green Goblin Lego set. And lo and behold, they sent me for this Christmas, the actual Lego set that I wanted. Oh my God. That's amazing. And it looks really dated and old. And I'm not sure. Like, I mean, obviously if this is like from that time, like, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, 20 ish years ago. So, right. That's like, I'm not sure if I should even try to open it. So I'm not, it's only 52 pieces. So <laughs> it would be really quick to oh. put together, but I don't know, maybe yeah. I should just keep it in its box. I really don't know. Um, I know. I think about that whenever I buy Lego and I have such a, I think I had about like 10 or a, like a 10 sets that I bought that I never put together. So I have like two big bags, you know, with the uh, the Lego that I want to build. And then this week, I think I, between the past two weeks, I built two sets and wow. I'm probably going to do like another one today just because I'm like, yeah, I mean, I like doing it. It's not like I'm forcing myself to build it, you know. Yeah, uh, I bought them for a reason, but I did score um, the Harry Potter uh, Diagon Alley set wow. like a couple weeks ago and you know, uh, my, uh, Sam has the, a discount at the store that we go to. So I really couldn't pass it up because it's been two years since I wanted the thing and I couldn't find it anymore. And uh, yeah, someone happened to return it. It was fully sealed. So I asked, do you guys take the discount? Wow. Okay, I'll take it. Was it, it wasn't <laughs> so, the Lego store in Disney Springs, was it? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Good for you. That's yeah. A good find. Yeah. I know. How yeah, many I have Ooh, it's like 6,000, 6,500, something insane. Um, And we also have one in progress, which is the world map that Sam's parents got us for Christmas. So, but that one, it's like the little studs, you know, so that takes forever Mm -hmm. to build. We started as soon as we got back from New York, but uh, we still have a long way to go. I just want to make sure it's built by the time they come to visit us in April because I, I wanted to, <laughs> you know, to, to show it to them. Yeah. Um, and um, but yeah, we're still working through that. And I have a bunch of like other sets that uh, that I started building over the past few weeks because for Christmas, most of my family gets me, um, you know, gets me Lego because they know how I like it so much. 
but I'm running out of room. Like, I don't even right. know where I'm going to put the, the Diagon Alley set. I think I'm going to have to leave it to build it like later on this year. Um, and then figure out like some other display, you know, uh, option. I might have to put up like another shelf in the, in the office or something, but yeah, I, I love it. It's really fun. It, it's expensive, you know, some of them, uh, but it's very good fun. I really enjoy it. Very cool. Well, keep us updated on the on the world map one and the Diagon Alley for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I really hope I haven't told this story on the podcast because I th- I feel like I've told it to so many people recently because it's just like one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. Um, have I shared the story of like these dog treats that? Um, I don't know. Like, does that ring a bell at all? Dog treats. Have I ever brought up dog treats on the pod? Um, I don't think so. I, I no. probably haven't. I just wanted to make sure. Um, yeah. Okay. So this happened pretty recently. So I was at um, one of my dog's favorite pet stores. Also one of my favorite pet stores. It has a not like the hugest selection at all. It's not like a pet smart or anything. It's a uh, locally owned business called Good Dog PDX. And uh, it's really nice. That's where he did like his puppy training. There's a whole training facility behind it that uh, you can book out for like a couple hours and just like let your dog play and you know, hang out with other dogs. So it's re- it's really nice. And the, the guy who owns it, super cool. He's opening a new one soon. So anyway, um, I was in this story. It was just me and him. We're just like shooting the shit, talking. And we're talking about dog treats because I, I was looking for, uh, you know, just like other dog treats that would go well with his tummy because he's allergic to certain things, of course, because he's a freaking yeah. sensitive dog. <laughs> um, so it, he's so bougie. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So um, like anything that's like less than subpar, he will just like get violently ill and it's so annoying. Aww. So we like we have to like read ingredients and like it's so annoying. But like, you know, we just mm-hmm. obviously want him to feel uh, healthy and not have to clean up his poop all the time. So, uh, yeah, so, right. so, so far that's been working for us. He's been really, really healthy for the past, like, you know, like eight months or whatever. So, okay. um, so anyway, he was recommending these treats and he was like, yeah, like the ingredients, there's only like five ingredients. You could literally eat them if you wanted to. I was like, Oh, ha ha. That's so funny. So he he took out the he he took them from the shelf and he opened it and ate one. He's like, here, try it. And I just like laughed it <laughs> off. I was like, oh, that's funny. It's like, eat it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I swear to God. So I just ate a dog treat with this dog pet, pet shop owner, dude. And we just ate a dog treat. And he's like, pretty good, right? And I'm just like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's so good, <laughs> but it's like the driest, <laughs> most disgusting thing I've ever had. Ew. Yeah, but technically, uh, yeah, gross. I mean, I looked at the ingredients. It's just like oats and like, I don't know, some fucking almond milk and <laughs> peanut butter, like, you know, super simple stuff, obviously, but right, not tasty. Eat it. <laughs> he was, it was so fucking funny. <laughs> it was he was like, no, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just quiet. <laughs> I had no choice but to eat it. Right, yeah. <laughs> to be polite, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, now I've had one of my dog's treats and I guess that's fine. But uh, yeah, yeah, he enjoys them. So that happened. Um, <laughs> what else? Oh, also, um, I was working, I think it was on Wednesday, and I was drinking some yerba mate and I like reached over to do something and I poured it all over my Keychron K2 keyboard. <gasps> no. Yeah. So I took out the, like the strainer for like, you know, if you're like washing salad or whatever, right. I put it Pasta, on there. Thank I you. took the, um, I took all the buttons off. I just like put it over the sink and I let it sit there for like the whole day. And then the oh, next few man. days I just let it dry out even more. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if I type like, I don't know, an E, it'll type like an omega and a three and a like an, an equal sign. It'll just do like every button but the E. Are you serious? So I think it's fried. I don't know. I, I did yeah. test it this morning and it seemed a little less glitchy because it is really yeah. dry. It's been like, I don't know, like three or four days. So um, yeah, I think there's hope, but. I don't know. It's it's kind of annoying. So I'm using oh. my the, the keyboard that work gave me and it's OK, but 
it's not a Keychron K2. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry yeah, to hear it, that. It's I okay. know that you were super excited when you got it, right? Yeah, that was one of my favorite things that I had got last year. And that was one of my re- recommendations on the show, I think, actually, too. So yeah. I highly recommend You're this right. keyboard. And if I have to, if it like it, if it does not work ever again, I'm probably just going to get the same one. I might try something mm-hmm. new, maybe from Keychron just to because I, I know I like their keyboards now. So that's good. But yeah, I may have I may have lost a soldier. So oh. moment of silence for Keychron K2. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> the trophy. <laughs> if you can edit that in. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's uh hopefully, you know, there is a there's hope. Do they have like a I mean, I don't know if the company has like you know, warranty or they'll take it in to fix it and whatever. Maybe. I, I haven't looked into it, honestly. I should. So oh, okay. that's uh, mm-hmm. that's first step. But if not, yeah, I'll just get something else from them because it was a great keyboard. It was just a nice. user error. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, I think about that all the time because I do have, you know, bottles with like lids and but so every now and then I'm drinking like uh, you know, out of a can or I have a, a coffee mug by me and I'm like, that is an accident waiting to happen. Uh, but thankfully, you know, knock on wood, it hasn't yet uh, or it will never because it would suck like really bad if I lost my um, my keyboards. Luckily, you know, like if I don't use the laptop directly, but like right now I am. So mm-hmm. yeah, it would it would just be like, it would just, it would just make me so mad because you know, it would be my my mistake, but um, yeah, unfortunately, these things happen. Yeah. Well, I I was looking at the the you have the MX Master Keys, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That one looks really nice, and I I am considering that one if I do have to get a new one. Uh, do you still recommend yeah. it after all this time that you've had it? Yeah, I actually I've had it for about a year now, uh, and I I love it. You know, because I can use it with three different devices, and I think it's. I mean, it's perfectly good for like the kind of keyboard that I like, which is like the low profile keys because the key crown looks great. And I've seen it on videos. I, I almost like considered, you know, like getting a, a taller like a. Yeah. Oh, look how cool. That's without the keys or is it with the keys? Oh, OK. Yeah, so I um I recommend the MX keys definitely because I, you know, I really like the, the shape, like the, the keys have like the, these indentations on them. So they, uh, they feel really nice to type. And it reminds me a lot of like the, the Mac keyboards that I've used. So yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if you, you know, if you wanted to give it a try, I still recommend it. I have the mouse to the, the master. Uh, I think this is a, what is it? MX. MX Master 3. This is the the mouse that goes with that keyboard. I should have bought them together. I don't know why I didn't, but I love this mouse. And you know, you have like you have the backlighting. Uh it has no RGB, you know, sadly. I think that will make it really cool. But I I like that you can use it with multiple devices. You know, it feels pretty solid. Uh it hasn't let me down yet. It's been a year and I use it every single day. You know, I used to use for work and for school, so like pretty much the whole day. And the mouse just as good. So yeah, I still recommend this for sure. All right, good to know. I uh, I'll consider it for sure. We'll see how it goes. Um <clears throat> Well, speaking of uh I don't know actually. I don't know what I'm <laughs> where I'm going with that, but <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of just, you know, being on a podcast about technology and stuff. Uh, yeah, I wanted to cover this very specific, not super specific, but this just like subtopic in crypto um, called staking, where, you know, you can stake your coins that you have. Um, Anna, have you, before we even like decided that we were going to cover it, do you have any experience staking coins or have you maybe heard it in passing? Um yeah, tell me about what you've heard about it initially, you know, before we research for the podcast, obviously. 
Yeah, I think uh, briefly, I never looked into it prior to, you know, this past week since we decided we're going to be discussing it. Um, And I feel like even, you know, today will give me an opportunity to see, to like know more from your perspective too, because I feel like I, I, no joke, I Googled, you know, crypto staking for dummies. I just wanted to see the really broken down explanation for this in a bite sized piece, you know, like explain like I'm five. But, um, but yeah, I, this is pretty much like the first time I know that I feel like a bunch of the exchanges are now doing this. Um, I was reading about it a little bit on Coinbase, but I feel like it's something worth, uh, you know, knowing, especially for like, for, you know, crypto heads and like people who, um, like to invest in cryptocurrency. Yeah. It, I, I would say the same for sure. Um, so to quickly like define it without a dummy example, like I think we should, I'm going to, I'm going to share a dumb example to like put it into, you know, dummy terms. And then maybe you can share one if you have your own, but I think we'll start with just kind of properly defining it without making some sort of analogy. So um, yeah. if you've ever heard of mining crypto, um, you know, this will kind of be something that you, will make a little more sense to you than maybe if you've never heard of crypto mining or whatever. But um, just like mining crypto or purchasing it outright on an exchange, crypto staking is just another way to get assets in your crypto wallet. Um, it's just when you lock up crypto holdings in order to earn interest. And uh, I think that's all we really need to talk about today. So uh, great show. Um <laughs> That's the best way to put it. So uh, we will see you next week, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I feel like... That's uh, that's pretty much what I took away from it. Like you're rewarded with crypto, you know, for like facilitating the blockchain to use your crypto, which validates, you know, transactions faster and makes the blockchain more robust. Yes. That's pretty much like the higher level, you know, definition that I have in my mind. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's a great way to put it. But, you know, also to people who don't invest in crypto, you know, we hear you. So we're going to put it into a really nice uh way to put it soon um so one thing we should cover before we get deeper into um you know this whole topic is uh proof of stake versus proof of work which maybe you Mm -hmm. came across in your research um i actually had never heard of either of them but Mm -hmm. i had heard of proof of work and how it works just i didn't know it was called proof of work so right um proof of work is like the the bitcoin method um but basically what they both do is they keep track of how much crypto everybody has. Um, so proof of stake is a blockchain verification method. By the way, this is a quote. I did not come up with this in my brain. I'm not that smart. This is a quote from Whiteboard Crypto. So proof of stake is a blockchain verification method that is much more energy efficient and less risky than more common proof of work method, like the Bitcoin method. Um, only one miner is chosen at a time to validate the blockchain, but the miner must lock up some of their coins as collateral to be chosen. The miner is punished for creating any fraudulent transactions by losing their collateral and rewarded for good transactions by the creation of new coins and with the transaction fees the senders paid. So also very Hmm. dictionary, very specific, but let me put it into... Uh, dummy terms. So um, let's say there was a foot race with eight runners and they all run their hearts out to make it to the finish line. But unfortunately, there's only one winner. So the losers wasted all their energy and they weren't rewarded in any way whatsoever. This would be proof of work, basically. But with Mm -hmm. proof of stake, only one runner is chosen to run based off of a few factors, which I don't even know if we're going to get into. But, you know, you could look at it as like stamina, skill, like speed, all that stuff. And then uh, since only one runner was chosen to run the whole race, you have all these other runners at the starting line that haven't even wasted their energy at all yet. Um, And the best part is anytime a runner is chosen, uh, they get rewarded. So every runner who finishes gets rewarded. Gotcha. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. Um, another thing that might, that, that makes proof of stake better 
is that anybody can succeed in it too. So um, with proof of work, the miners, you know, they're usually like the people with like warehouses of all this computing power and, you know, the everyday person like me and Anna or, or you guys, like we don't have all these uh, crazy computers and everything just like lying around to solve these complex problems to get rewarded with more Bitcoin. Um, mm-hmm. So this is more geared towards the everyday investor slash crypto head, whatever, because um, you could do this with your laptop and you're just at the same level of advantage as these people who have all this computing power. Like it's just not really fair. And that's what crypto or proof of stake was really designed for, just to make it more fair for the everyday user. Um, right. But yeah, with a laptop, you can be just just as success, successful as them. Yeah, no, I feel like the the two analogies, um, they pretty much confirm like what I was a little, you know, what I, I thought of uh, proof of work and stake. But it makes more sense how there is more benefit to one. And then, like you said, you know, for for Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin uses proof of work. And then um, common ones that I read that use proof of stake are Ethereum 2.0, uh, Tezos and Cosmos, uh, you know, two other types of cryptocurrency. So <clears throat> I think that um, it shows how they are so like there are so there are, you know, different ways of uh it's hard to, I guess, define which one is more beneficial than the other. But then again, you brought up, you know, you added context by um, by discussing. It's hard to define like the benefit, you know, like which one is more beneficial than the other. But you did add a good context, you know, about like the electricity consumption and, you know, the fact that with proof of work, there's only one person that ends up benefiting from it. So I feel like that's why some currencies uh, adopt, you know, one over the other, like uh, Bitcoin uses proof of work still. We don't know if there will ever be like another version of Bitcoin. I mean, so as far as we know, it's 21 million Bitcoins that get mined and then that's it, you know, so like everything will be out there. Um, I don't know if like the Bitcoin blockchain will get upgraded, but with Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0 is proof of stake um, as well as Tezos and Cosmos. So, yeah, you know, apparently there is uh, like there's a bit of a trend. I don't know if these are like the I think these are probably like the most common, you know, Bitcoins because they have like uh, bigger names that use these two. But I don't know if the you know, if there are like a bunch of other ones out there that use one or the other. Yeah. So that's actually what I wanted to get into next. So that's perfect. Um, So what I want to share with you guys is basically how you can stake uh, Mm -hmm. crypto if you would like to, which. I would recommend adding to your repertoire of investment techniques that you may or may not already be doing. It's just another thing that you can do on top of what you're already comfortable with doing as far as crypto goes. So mm-hmm. um, the first step is to find a crypto. So uh, so not only do you need to find a cryptocurrency that offers the option to stake it, but you should also mm-hmm. find something that you heavily researched into because you don't you, you shouldn't just blindly choose a crypto or a project because, you know, there, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it, like the, the market cap, the, you know, the interest rates, like all these things. So, I mean, if you... Is it a meme coin? Meme coins. <laughs> yeah. Like if yeah. you're going to choose one, maybe choose some of the bigger ones, like um, Cardano is something you can stake. You can stake Solana, Polkadot, Terra, Tezos. Um, and then you mentioned Cosmos. I guess you can yeah. yeah you can definitely stake Cosmos as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the best thing if let's say you're already investing in Ethereum and Cardano and Solana, if you like you've already done your research on those already and they have the option to stake, like you might as well just like you know put a little bit towards staking it as well. Um, I do I I did find that like Ethereum's not a hundred percent there in staking yet because they've been in the process of transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. So Uh you can still do it. It's not like going to be a terrible thing at all, but it's not something that was natively built on proof of stake. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, Yeah. So after you find the crypto that you actually want to stake, the second step is, you know, you basically buy it. And then you stake it. (laughs) It's really, I I will, I will go into it, but it's really not as complex as maybe I'm putting it. Um, 
like like kind of I said, it is just another technique of what you're already doing with your crypto. You know, some mm-hmm. people invest in it and that's it. Or they like, I don't know, they just use it as another way of payments or whatever. They're not really looking at long term. Maybe they're shorting it or whatever. But staking is something that you can also do long term and it can be super safe. But I will definitely go into that a lot more later. Um, so like I said, the second step would be to buy the crypto and stake it. So, um, to buy the crypto, if you haven't done that already, you would have to pick somewhere to buy it from like an exchange of some sort. So, um, Anna and I like Coinbase. Binance is great. Kraken is pretty good as well. Um, do your research, kind of pick one that you like and that people like as well. Something that's backed. Um, you could, I mean, go ahead and risk it at all and do something that's brand new and maybe doesn't have as much traffic going to it. But, um, you know, all these, uh, exchanges, they have different fees. Um, so you're sacrificing like, you know, a great UI with, you know, the labor that goes into building it, which includes the, a great UI as well. Um, yeah. Do you have any other exchanges that you recommend as far as like buying crypto? Uh, I, I think I agree with you on the ones. So I use primarily Coinbase, Gemini, and I do not recommend crypto.com. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, a lot of people give it some hate. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? So <clears throat> the issue I'm currently having, I've had an account for a long, long time, yeah. um, almost a year. And, and like I, for some reason, got logged out of my app because I think that the, you know, the, um, uh, mobile app is like was their primary product uh, and I got an account a long time ago uh, you know put in, put some money into it bought some coins and for some reason over the past couple of weeks I got logged out of it and I can't log back in and I've been like chatting with support for almost two weeks and I'm like okay it's one of these two emails you have my phone number you like know who I am I mean I verified the account when I started you know because you have to like provide um like an uh, identification issued by the government so I did that when I got the account but now I can't log in and I'm like oh god it should not be this difficult because every time I put my phone number in it says it doesn't exist but it's because it's tied to another account Uh. so it won't let me like it's just like this vicious you know like circle of hell that i'm just super annoyed at and i was like okay so have you guys figured out like can you just let me know you know how to log into my account i have money in there and i just want to you know take a look like i need access to it i mean at at least you're not that guy that has all of his coins (laughs) cold stored on that usb and lost in the dumpster (laughs) that's pretty bad yeah yeah, no, dude, can you imagine? Um, yeah, no, luckily it's not that case. Millions but of dollars. I know. It would suck if in the future, you know, like I got more money in there and just could never log in. But I think eventually it will figure, like, you know, they'll they'll figure it out and I'll be able to log in. But um, it's not the best experience, that's for sure. Even before, like, I thought that the app was super laggy. I have always liked, you know, Coinbase and Gemini much better. Uh, and you know, there's also like the elements of support. Like if there's an issue, I did hear back from the other ones, uh, or I didn't even have to reach out, but now, you know, with crypto.com, like I'm just annoyed. So yeah. I, I, I'm with you on that. I, I could see how that's super. I mean, like it's not super uncommon for all the exchanges to kind of be like that though, you know, like, mm-hmm. especially, I mean, if you're going on a decentralized one, you are effed for life if you screw up. But I mean, even the centralized yeah. ones, they they sh- I feel like they really shouldn't give you as much trouble as they're giving you. But mm-hmm. it, it, unfortunately, that is like pretty common even amongst centralized ones. So, um, yeah. OK, so let's say you choice your choice. You chose Coinbase. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the next step after you've bought your crypto on Coinbase is to find somewhere to stake it. Um, and luckily, there's a lot of options like centralized and decentralized. Um, as far as centralized options go, you can actually stake on Coinbase so you can keep it all within the same platform. Um, yeah. It is limited, though. So they do offer staking for Cosmos, Tezos, Ethereum and Algorand at four to five percent APY. Um, okay. There's Binance. There is uh, CEX dot IO or sex dot IO. I don't know exactly. Kex. I don't know. Um, there's Kraken. Yeah. Kraken's really good. 
KuCoin isn't mm-hmm. very good as far as the rates that they offer. And then there's my container, which is more of a newer platform. And the only big difference between all of these, aside from the UI, is the the rates that they offer for each individual coin. Because some mm-hmm. uh, some uh, platforms they offer like let's say they would offer like three percent for one or four percent for one. But then like if you were to do it on just another centralized platform, not even natively, you might get like eight to ten percent, which is a huge difference. Um, yeah. And I do actually, I have an example about that. So, um, but before I get into that, so as far as decentralized options go, one of the, uh, hi, Sam. Yeah, Victor says hi. Hi, Victor. <laughs> um, as far as decentralized options go, Pancake Swap is the biggest and most popular one, and people love it. Mm. But then Binance also offers decentralized uh, staking. It's called Binance DeFi staking. So if you're already in Binance and you want to, you know, give it your best shot at de- decentralized um, staking. You can just try it, try it within Binance. But if you're a, a brand new person and you're just like kind of curious, maybe it's best to just go with Coinbase. Cause I do know that there's a couple coins on there that they actually offer the same rate um, on Coinbase as they do natively. I think mm-hmm. I think Algorand maybe is one of them. I don't remember exactly which coin it is, but you're going to get the same rate as you would if you were to be a crazy technical person and do it natively. But um, yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. I do have an example. So let's say you wanted to stake $1,000 on something like Cosmos on Coinbase um, at the rate of 5% APY. Uh, mm-hmm. After five years, your final balance would be $1,276.28 assuming that there's no price change. So this is all just mm-hmm. a level playing field, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And that's on Coinbase. So let's say you invested that same $1,000 on Cosmos natively, meaning not through an exchange, um, at their current rate of 12.49%. Your final balance after five years would be eight, $1,801.23, which is a $524.95 difference by just simply staking the coin in a different place. So wow! obviously with Coinbase, you're paying for the convenience since it has a much better UI than going the decentralized yeah. me- method of staking natively. So mm-hmm. to some, this is totally like the, the fee is totally worth it. But yeah, um, I mean, if you're a guru and you want to like go hardcore and do it decentralized, you're going to get a much better return. So it might be worth, you know, looking into doing it that route. Yeah, I think that also brings up, you know, the fact that that maybe the reward is higher because the risk is also higher. Yes. You know, like if it's decentralized, then you're putting yourself out there because you never know. Like, you know, uh, I mean, even with these well-established exchanges, you they can still get hacked and you can lose your the investment that you have, you know, through them. Because when you're buying a coin on Coinbase, technically Coinbase is owning that coin for you. Have you have keys. an account with them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you don't have your keys, you know, you're in like, uh, you're just putting your money and they're, they're middleman between you and the blockchain and they're, you know, buying stuff for you. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, it's a good, it's a good way to, to think, yeah, you're, you might get a better rate, but your risk is also, you know, a bit higher too. So, mm-hmm. but then again, high risk, a high reward, um, or if you want to be more moderate, you can, you know, pick like a, um, a different platform. It's really up to you. Yes, definitely. So, um, one thing that would be really cool is if there was a single web app that allowed you to look at the different rates of each coin on all of the big platforms at once, but there isn't, as far as I'm like, I couldn't find anything like that. You just have to go on mm-hmm. each one or find some article where they break it down. But there's, mm-hmm. I don't think there's an app out there that just lets you check that, which would be really nice. So, you know, if you're yeah. a, a blockchain expert out there and you want to start <laughs> developing on the blockchain, maybe that's a good idea for you. But I don't think that exists currently. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I, I did mention this earlier, but staking is just another way to expand your investment techniques with crypto. Um, mm-hmm. And like I said, if you're already planning on investing and holding it for a longer amount of time, it's honestly a pretty safe way to do so because you aren't even sending the money anywhere and nobody is borrowing it. So the worst yeah. thing that can happen to you is that you lose your password like Anna <laughs> and you can't access your account right. and you can't access your funds. Um, although mm-hmm. I should advise that 
um, that you shouldn't go for the low cap coins, like I mentioned, that have like 500% APY. Like that's so like you want to go for it, obviously, because yeah. it's so tempting because like huge mm-hmm. return. But um, some exchanges offer that uh, just to kind of, you know, reel you in. Um, and obviously it's super yeah. high risk of losing money. So maybe not the smartest option. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, those coins are usually uh, they haven't been around for super long. They're super volatile. Um, compared to the average coin, which, you know, is relatively volatile anyway, as crypto is, but those even worse. So um, if you're just trying yeah. to get long term gains, just pick the big guys that you're comfortable with and the ones, like I said, that you're already investing in and you should be good. It's just another um, way to expand your horizons and have a broader mm-hmm. uh, investment technique. So, yeah. I feel like, you know, it's uh, in tangent with uh, just like, you know, if you have dollars, if you're not a true believer in like cryptocurrency, if you leave your money sitting in a savings account, what is the point? You know, like uh, you need to put your money to work like it needs to generate more money to keep up with inflation or even beat it. You know, like you need to um, make your money grow so like you can put it in index funds, you can you know, invest in moderately or high, like in high risk. Um, and you, you know, you might get like a really good reward, but Mm -hmm. I think that just with like, uh, with crypto and I should probably be better at this too, you know, but I'm also like learning about staking. Um, like I said, I like, uh, I probably heard it in passing. Um, but I feel like now discussing it, it, it makes more sense. But yeah, same thing, you know, I inve- I uh, invested in crypto and now I feel like it should be doing more than just, you know, sitting there and kind of like waiting for Bitcoin to just uh, go up in value again. You know, I feel like it, I could be if I stake, I could be getting more cryptocurrency, which is, you know, the whole point. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I think that it's uh it's a it's a good idea just because you know like uh investing you should always try to like you know grow like your your investments instead of just letting it sit there and kind of like hoping for the best you know yeah um the savings account thing i was going to bring up too um i do think it's great to save money that's like one of my favorite things to do actually i love saving money Mm -hmm. and I think one of like the most important things you can do if you are interested in saving money is to save up like an amount that you're comfortable with where like you could not work for like, I don't know, three to six months. Like that's probably step number yeah. one before you mm-hmm. get super invested in stocks and crypto and stuff like you can do it along the way. You can definitely do it all at the same time for sure. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. But I do think that it would be not super smart if you weren't prioritizing saving just cold hard cash on the side before you start placing all your eggs in the crypto basket so that's my two Mm -hmm. cents but yes i totally totally agree that if you're just saving money in a savings account and it's not even a high yield savings account and you're not investing in anywhere you're losing money every single year even though you're trying to save Mm -hmm. it so it's like not the best route to take um so i don't recommend that but there is a balance for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it like that, I feel like the whole uh, foundation of the banking system is to use people's money to then turn around, invest it and make the bank more money, yeah. you know? So like the, the bank's money is not just sitting there, you know, they're like using your bank, your, your money that you leave in your bank account. So they're using that for, you know, investments. Mm-hmm. Um, so, might as well just follow suit like you know the financial industry is probably the biggest in the world so um yeah you know let's uh with crypto you can do just as much there there really is like no no limit you know like there's so many possibilities within the crypto world so this is like another way to um to maximize on that because i feel like yeah we're you know at the forefront of this like huge shift you know like the financial um the financial system so might as well take advantage yes i i could not agree more um Mm -hmm. i i hope i mentioned this before but i'm just gonna say it again just to be super safe um and to cover our our butts but if you're like Mm -hmm. the person who likes to short everything and you're like maybe a day trader sort um maybe staking (laughs) isn't the best option for you because it might just kind of increase your odds of losing a ton of money all the time. 
But, Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, just like take this with a grain of salt. Do your own research, obviously. We're not financial advisors, but I will say that like as long as you're just being smart with your investments and holding your investments and not just like selling out as soon as you get emotionally yeah. tied to it. Um, I think this is a good bet for you for sure. And I wouldn't even call it a bet. It's just, it's as much of a bet as it is for investing in the SP S and P 500 term. So if you want to call that a bet, right. you can call this a bet as well. Um, mm-hmm. but speaking of the financial climate currently, um, mm-hmm. I think we have to bring this up even though like <laughs> it's been a week since the people listening, uh, have maybe first heard about this, but uh, the biggest thing that happened, at least for our week, was Meta losing two hundred thirty <laughs> billion dollars in one single day, which was the single day loss, sing- the biggest single day loss by a U.S. company in the history of us tracking money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that happened. Um, so the company, this is uh, starting a quote. So, quote, the company has struggled with waning relevance among young people as CEO Mark Zuckerberg refocuses its aim towards metaverse plans. It was hit hard by changes Apple made to its ad privacy policy. CFO David Weiner said Wednesday that Meta would likely lose more than $10 billion in sales as a result of the new iOS rules, which limit customer tracking. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people talk about this recently and yeah, like, like just like YouTubers, for instance, if they're tracking like um, people who use their affiliate links for signing up for Coinbase, for instance, or uh, like an Amazon affiliate link or whatever, they can usually track that down to a T to see exactly how many people are using that link. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the company can also report that as well and say like, oh, well, they're getting this many people to use that link. So let's give them this amount of money. They're Mm -hmm. only like reporting like 30% now, like it's dropped significantly. So like a lot of people are going to have to start navigating this new world of tracking data in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. Cause now we can't even, you know, uh, track as many data points on a customer now. So some people are going to be hurting, but I think long term this is, like just kind of a pause on what we're already going to achieve eventually anyway. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we're going to yeah. track it eventually, but this is just a, a big hurdle for sure. And I'm down with it. Cause I, mm-hmm. I hate that companies know everything about me. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I feel like, uh, just yesterday, you know, I was looking at, um, buying out my lease, um, for my car cause that's coming up and I want to keep the car cause it's worth more than, you know, I would owe. So, okay, I went online and, geez, this morning, the number of emails and phone calls that I got just about that, I mean, I, yeah, sure, I gave out my phone number, you know, because that's the only way I could get some quotes on the car, but I'm just like, that's borderline harassment. Like, I just wanted to get a quote and, you know, I'm getting slammed with emails at like 11 o'clock at night from an actual person, not just an automated, you know, system. Did you use a software like, or did you use some sort of website where it's like a one-stop shop that shows you all the quotes? Yeah. That's the problem. Those will get you. Yeah. Cause I did that for when we were moving Learned from Florida to Oregon, obviously I was shopping around for quotes to like move all of our stuff and my car and everything out yeah. for us. So I used one of those, those websites that, that shows you the quote for like all the local places in your area. That was the biggest mistake yeah. of my life. Cause I got calls every day for a month from random yeah. movers. And I was like, dude, I've already moved. Like it's too late. I'm sorry. So yeah, yeah, that's the worst. I hate it. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a big pain. And also, and I'm with you as well, you know, like, uh, I, I would like to have some kind of like some semblance to an, uh, like, anonymity you know because they're like everyone needs a bit of privacy like not everything that's going on in your personal life needs to be known but i feel like with you know these uh tech companies i mean i was just reading that apparently in europe they just passed a law that companies or websites using uh google fonts if you're loading up using the um like the cdn you know like the the link Mm -hmm. that google gives you instead of downloading the font to your project 
you're going to be breaching the uh, GDPR uh, pro, uh, uh, law or whatever. You're going to be breaking the law. Wait, wh- because do you know what Google, country? Google, tr- oh, I don't know now. Was it England? I can't remember. I'm going to have to find the article. I- I'll look it up. But yeah, basically, it was ruled that that is illegal because Google tracks like your pro- the usage of your pro- you know of their link and their fonts in your project. Are you serious? Like there is, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna find that article. Hold on. Oh my god, I made. I probably Google made. Fonts. I don't know, like five or six websites this week for work. I, Germany. Oh, okay, that's not good. I used. I made five or six websites for our company this week and Uh some of them are international clients in Europe and obviously visitors from all over the world go to the websites. Um, I used Google fonts on all of them and I used the CDN. Yeah. Oh, Oh, I did. I did too. Every time I never downloaded the fonts to the project, but apparently I think that that's the way that it it will, um, it will have to be, done like in the future i think unless you know the law doesn't really apply to apply to you because apparently this is like you know uh for now it's at least just germany but i thought it was really interesting and i was like damn like google uses even the fonts link to to track you know like uh, the the usage and where in like they're passing data through the link uh which is crazy but is it really a surprise like you know, that's how they get in through the back door. Like they're just, uh, they're like, you know, the very like quiet and, and like meticulous, you know, like they're very methodical about everything that they do. Like there's no, I mean, how do people ex- like explain the the huge valuation these companies have other than, yeah, they do some shady practices, you know? <laughs> so wow. yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad though that there's you know good pushback. I feel like some some good things have come out of GDPR for sure because um, there needs to be you know like a fight from the customer perspective and not just all these you know tech companies getting away with everything that they can because they have like genius engineers you know they're like oh we could do this you know yeah. um, but um, but yeah I thought that that was like a, an interesting an interesting decision uh, from you know from the Germany court. So, uh, I'm still in shock about this. Oh man, I have to share this with every everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah it it does it sucks that um that we even got to a point where we had to uh have Apple step in and like do this and hurt like mm-hmm. you know obviously big tech companies which I don't really feel bad about at all but <laughs> you know like. Let's say like we like for instance, me and Anna, we track our audience for listening on the podcast. Um, I have a feeling that we're not going to be able to track as many things because of this now, which is really not a big deal. I don't really care too much, but I'm also just Mm -hmm. picturing like a a small sort of family owned business who tracks like, you know, visitors to their website or whatever and lead generation. Like I would imagine that's going to be a little bit hindered now because of this. So I don't know. It, yeah. it kind of has its ups and downs for sure. But I mean, stick it to the freaking sure. man. I really don't care what happens to like Twitter if they can't track as many mm-hmm. data points on me now. Like that's fine with me. Yeah. Well, and also like I, like you said, you know, it really depends um, for like business purposes. Yeah. They want to get as much information as, as they can, because, you know, if you're trying to sell a service or a product, like you need to know who you're targeting. But like in the case of us, yeah, we monitor, you know, like our um our stats or analytics for the podcast but we don't have any kind of like uh, indication outside of uh what day of the week you know this podcast has done well like uh you know how many listens from which country we don't have names or emails or phone numbers of anybody Mm -hmm. so you know it's like uh yeah it really does i think there is you know a, a clear like a distinct um you know way in that that you can use you know uh, user data but or even you know um i think misuse you know or abuse user data but there are also you know like ways that you can i don't know that you can still uh be fine with what you're given and 
I don't know, just like get creative, you know, uh, it might not be as targeted because you don't have like 2000 points on, you know, this person's life. Like if I have to name 2000 things about me, I would be very surprised. But, you know, if you think about like all the uh, like, you know, credit unions, they can. They have like 3000 points of data on every single individual yeah. in the country, which is insane. So or is every single person with a social security, you know. But um, but yeah, it's just I don't know. I thought it was a an interesting development. We'll see like what the you know the consequences of that are. But um, but yeah, Google, tisk tisk. <laughs> um, I mean, Meta is still worth roughly six hundred seventy one billion dollars and reported profits of over forty billion in twenty twenty one. So do I feel bad at all? Like I said, no, not at all. I think they're gonna also bounce back from it very. If, what, if they can go down that quickly, I'm sure they can also go up as, just as quickly, too. So mm-hmm. I'm not too worried about Meta, unfortunately. I wish I was worried about them. Um, right. Oh, my gosh. So this is I actually. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was uh, just before you switch over, um, because this is related to Meta. I uh, found this funny post on Wall Street Bits uh, last night about uh the melvin capital uh, hedge fund manager um what's his name uh plot plotkin yeah gabe plotkin so he's the guy that was you know that is the head of the fu- the hedge fund that lost 53 percent of um uh of their like you know fund uh last year because of the gamestop short mm-hmm. And he so they lost like over half of their, you know, uh, funds to be able to like, you know, play with it and invest and all that. So apparently last year in the fourth quarter, they bought one point three billion dollars worth of Facebook stock. So I bet this guy is shitting his pants oh, right about no. now. But then again, do we feel guilty Not really. or do we feel bad? No, like For a big hedge this fund? is still no, a really. billionaire. Yeah, like I, who cares? Um, but yeah, like you said, I really don't think that I mean, you know, Meta is also like one of the the most valuable companies in the world in history. So will they bounce back? Yeah, they have the means to. They have the resources and yeah. the brain power. You know, and it's not like Facebook is their only product. Like they have so many. Like you know, Meta is like the parent company, just like Alphabet is to Google. So they have a bunch of other like verticals. Um, and uh, yeah, it's definitely. I'm, I'm sure it's a huge hit for them, but whatever, they'll figure it out. Yeah, guys. It's good to see them sweating, I think. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, well, what about recommendations? So um, you right. said you're excited about yours, so I have a feeling yours is better than mine, so I will happily go first because I feel <laughs> like mine is, is you know, okay. So okay, you go ahead. Mine is this, it's a Chrome extension, but it's also a website. Let me share my screen. So basically... What you can do is, let's say you're developing something and, you know, you're about to make it live and all this stuff. And maybe it's even for a client, for instance. So it has to be like Mm -hmm. really, really on. Gosh, I can't make this full screen. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Okay, perfect. So let's say like you don't have exactly like a checklist at the ready and you have to make your own and like over time you expand it and stuff. Well, there's this thing out there called the web developer checklist by Toptal and they Ooh. have the checklist ready for you. And so like, let's say for best practices, they have fixed broken links, spelling and grammar, you know, very simple things like that. But then they get all the way down to co- code quality, like HTML validation, CSS lint. Um, and then they even go into accessibility. So like color contrast, and then uh, they actually wow, have resources under so each um, checkpoint. So, like for SSL, uh-huh. like they have all these refer- all these uh, all these links to go and get your SSL uh-huh. certificate. Um, uh-huh. You know, by ever whatever means you need to get it. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, it's really cool. So let's say I'm on my website. I have the Chrome extension, so I just click on the Chrome extension, and it runs all the tests immediately, and it shows me that I passed seven out of thirteen of the tests Uh, and then it shows me like what I should do. So it's kind of like, um, like running a lighthouse audit, 
but mm-hmm. it's I, it, it seems like a little better because there's actual links to resources on how you can fix them, which I don't know if Lighthouse mm-hmm. does that. So, yeah, yeah, that was my find for the week. And it's it's really cool. I really like it. Um, the next thing I'm probably going to do is fix. Th- I'm sure I'm importing so many fonts on here, so I'm going to have to <laughs> try to <laughs> find a way so that I'm not fine it, being fined by myself or however it works. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I feel like uh, I also need to to correct that on my portfolio site because I'm pretty sure I use the Google font uh, to make it look nice and all. But oh, might as well just might, might just have to like download it and drop it in like an assets folder or right. whatever. Um, oh, January 31st. Oh, this is old. This is old news. Jeez. That's not good. <laughs> I'm sure like whatever like I'm doing at work, I feel like there's no way that I've broken the law this many times. <laughs> like there's no way. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to have to talk with other people at work cause I know they're doing it as well. And that's just how we've always done it to get a font really quickly. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Yikes. I mean, I'm sure a bunch of companies may be scrambling with this at the moment as well, but yeah. Yeah. Geez. We'll see. Anyway, Anna, can you share with us your recommendation? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, this one, I had heard of this before, but I eventually came through a link because um, I don't know if you know, but recently it's picked up some traction that AI uh, generated images are like a thing where you essentially combine like two topics and then you have, you know, like a model that actually creates the image for you. So um, I had seen like a, I thought I came across like a GitHub repository that you could do this like, you know, as a, as a programmer, there was a little bit of setup, but you could eventually like combine two images and it's so cool but then apparently this one um that i found is even easier like you literally just enter a prompt so i'm going to share my screen so you can see it um actually i think um you might have to enable that got it Um, there you go all right cool so you can uh this up one okay cool so in this case, um, the it's called the Wombo.art. Like they have, I think they also have like an iOS app uh, that I saw. You can download it on yeah, App Store or Google Play, but you can also use their web app. And uh, yeah, so if you go to their website, um, and we'll have the link on the show notes, you can just enter a prompt. So I'm just going to go with one of their suggestions, uh, DNA, tornado, and then you can click like the art style. They have a whole bunch here. Uh, and then you can also go with the no style option, but let's pick this vibrant one. And then it's going to create uh, an AI generated image with that particular like prompt or like keywords, you know, but with this art style. So it's Whoa. like, you, can you see already like the yeah. tornado shape? Yeah. So like it, it's kind of like, uh, oh, you can mint it as an NFT or that's coming up soon. But um, yeah, like it kind of like uh, it's kind of like an uh, amalgamation mm-hmm. of sorts, you know, of like the two topics, the art and also like the, the prompt that you entered. But I thought that this was really cool. So you don't have to like, you know, code it out yourself if you don't want right. to. But um, but I think that, you know, it looks like they don't have that many art style options. But um, I mean, you can create like anything, which I think is really neat to like. And this is probably the model running on the like, you know, the, the back end. You can even see it like going through cycles like it starts to, you know, like it go through stages and you can see the images like getting closer and closer to what the end product is going to be. Yeah. So I think that it's uh, it's cool because they're wow. all like, I mean, I really like this. This one is pretty. Um, it's custom, you know, like they you can make any kind of image. And this is just one of the, Wait, the websites, so can you know, you type in uh, anything you want. Um, yeah, let me go can back. You type actually. in tomato and dog. Yeah, let's try that. Tomato dog. And then uh, uh, do synth wave. I think it's all the way at the which bottom. One? Oh, this one? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, it should give us anything. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> what is that? Oh, my God. That is so weird. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. That looks like. Oh, my God. Look at that. 
this is cool. This is real That's cool. Terrifying. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, I like that. I'm yeah, gonna play I, with this so much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, me too. I think that some of these are gonna um, uh, are gonna turn out to be some like you know interesting blockchain. Um, I don't know some interesting pictures, but <clears throat> yeah, I th- I thought that this was really cool. I really I've liked you know AI generated images for like a while, but. Um, I mean, I don't know if I see the blockchain in it, but uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, it's a bunch of like mushrooms connected. So, hey, that's the blockchain. Hey, I there guess. you go. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Find. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that this was really cool. I uh, you can create some cool, you know, um, I think backgrounds for your phone, especially if you're using the, the iPhone app um, or the, you know, the Android app. So, yeah, it's just, you know, a little something different that um, you can make like a custom image. You know, it's just it's really neat that they it uses like the, you know, the word that you're you're entering as the prompt. But then you can use one of the uh, the art styles that they have. I'm sure that there are a bunch of other apps that are kind of like this. So, yeah, this is just like one of them. So, yeah, that's my find. All right. Well, I know what I'm doing for the rest of the day. Um <laughs> <laughs> mushroom uh, tomato yeah, dog <laughs> good find good find um let's see i think that's the show guys is there anything else anna i think i've covered everything in my notes today no yeah i think that uh it was good i you know you definitely shared um much more than what i was able to find and like interpret myself you know about crypto staking so hopefully um, you know, our, our listeners also took, uh, something away from it, but then again, you know, let's to keep it, uh, to keep it fun. Um, like this is just, you know, like a conversation, it's not advice or anything. We're just putting that out there. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely cool. Yeah. Well, check us back next week, guys. Thank you for listening. And, uh, we will, I don't know what we're going to talk. I, do we know what we're talking about next week? I think we wrote one down. Was it, um, I, I don't know if it was the farming or if we're doing ethical hacking. Oh, yeah. It could, it could be one of those. So stay tuned right. for an update, guys. Actually, no, I mean, you'll find out on the episode. So we're not going to tell you before, but it could be one of those two things. So. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you for listening, guys. Uh, please, like, spread the word if you can. Maybe leave us a couple more reviews. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, as always, just... Uh, Just keep checking us out, and we really appreciate you. So, peace out. Yeah, and and, uh, get rid of your Google font links. (laughs) Yes, that too. (laughs) Bye.